This is the biggest carnivorous plant trap ever grown. It could easily catch and consume rats. Here, we're going to share the secrets with you of exactly how we created it and how we grew it to be so huge. Hello, my name is Rob Cantley and welcome to the Borneo Exotics channel. Today we have something truly spectacular to show you. This is a cultivar called Nepenthes Titanic. And we have just received a Guinness Book of Records for the largest carnivorous plant, cultivated carnivorous plant by volume. The volume is 2.986 liters. The height of the pitcher from the base to the lid is 47 centimeters, which is 18.5 inches. And the circumference on the fattest part of the pitcher is 18 inches or 46 centimeters. So truly a monstrous plant. And it's big enough to be capable of eating small mammals such as rats or mice. So it's quite something. Now this was created as a hybrid between two species from the Philippines, originally from the Philippines, and one is called Nepenthes sabuyanensis, the other one is Nepenthes meridiana from two different parts of the Philippines. We raised the parent plants from seeds and then grew them to maturity, crossed them, and produced this monster. So I can't take much of the credit for it because my wife Diana is the one who actually made it. Diana. Well, I actually made this plant in 2009. When we say I made it, it's not quite like that exactly. Um, we had plants, obviously, in the lowlands, as we had lowland nurseries in those times. And now we grow all the lowland plants up here in the highlands where we are today. And so the parent was... Uh, a male uh, lowlander and the female came from this nurseries, was growing in this nurseries where we are now. Um, the reason being that if you hybridize um, something that is a lowlander with a montane species, you then get something which is far more tolerant to a wide range of conditions. So it's easier for everybody to be able to enjoy them at wherever you are in the world, rather than being a montane species and it's got to be very cool, humid but cool um, at the same time, and that's very difficult for some people. Um, and on the other hand, if you've got lowland conditions, it's very hot and humid. So therefore, if you, if you combine the two, um, you get something which is far more tolerant for everybody to be able to grow in a wider range of conditions. I chose these two plants because they both had large pitchers, not as large as this. Um, they also both had rather pretty coloration. Um, there's a speckling and spotting on the pitcher. There's a lovely peristome. The peristome also has a little uh, crinkly section to it here, like a little frill around it. Um, so it gets something from both the highland and both parents, the, the male and the female. And those days I used to bring the pollen, collect the pollen in the lowland nurseries and very carefully pack it, store it, bring it up within 24 hours, which is a six hour drive up to our nurseries here and then pollinate it as soon as we got up here. Usually it was evening time for the pollination. So that's a little bit about um, the growing conditions and the reason why I actually chose those two plants. And as you can see, we have great success. So we have a great honor to have the first World Guinness Book of Records for uh, Nepenthe is a carnivorous plant at Borneo Exotics. This is the largest ca cultivated carnivorous plant. The largest one recorded actually was in Sabah, 
in the 1970s, but it wasn't measured by volume officially. But we measured this very carefully on a, a video which you can, you can see if you click to the link, click on the link here, you'll be able to take a look at the actual video where we measured the volume very, very carefully. And it was just shy of three liters. So this is a cultivar, which means it's a single clone. And we only have the one plant. It's a very precious plant. It's very special, but it's part of a grex of seeds, which means there are a lot of other plants coming from the same seed pod, which may be just as big as this, which are available through our network of distributors if you are interested in obtaining one. And it's possible that amongst the mixed clones that we do sell, there's one as big or bigger, possibly even than this one. So this is not in the laboratory, it's not in tissue culture. So the next big step for us is to introduce this into cultivation other than just a single plant, which means putting it into tissue culture. And uh, there's various ways that can be done, but it's not an easy task. And that's our next goal. In closing, I'd like to thank a number of people. Um, firstly, my wife, Diana, for having the great idea of making this cross. Yes. <laughs> and um, then it was raised in the nurseries, grown from seed by the team here at Borneo Exotics the, with enormous love and care. This was made in 2009. So it's taken 16 years, although it actually was this big a while ago, but it's taken 16 years to grow this particular plant. So the team here at Borneo Exotics and this nursery is headed by a gentleman called Bala, who's been with us for 25 years. So all credit to him for raising it so beautifully. Also, thank you very much to um, Jeremiah Harris, who helped introduce us to the right people to get this into the Guinness Book of Records. And also Dr. Barry Myers-Rice, who uh, also effected an introduction. And especially thank you to the Guinness Book of Records team, because they were tremendous um, in responding to this, checking all the facts, and very efficient indeed. So it won't be actually appearing in print in the book until I think it's October 2026. But we have the certificate, and we are so proud and so happy to have a certificate for this cultivar, Nepenthes Titanic. So we hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like us and click on the subscribe button below to join our channel, as we'll be bringing you a lot more interesting videos, very similar to this one, and we have a lot more to show you as well.